In our last video, we discussed how we can actually connect a Jenkins master container to the host Docker, which is running on my local Windows machine. In order to just holistically see what really happened in our earlier video while we were configuring with the TCP of the host dot Docker dot internal, this is what happened. So I currently have a setup something like this. I have a Windows machine or Windows 10 machine, which actually has a Docker for Windows running on it. And all these days we have been spinning our Jenkins master from a container, something like this. So this is what really happened, right? And then we told that we are going to be using container as an agent instead of the usual agent using the slave.jar file which connects with JNLP and all those stuff. We're not going to be really using it. Rather, we are going to use a container as an agent in this case. So in order to do that, we actually need to somehow connect with our Docker for Windows, which is running on my host machine. So in order to make this communication to create an agent from the Docker, which is running within my local machine, I need to somehow communicate from my master to the Docker which is running within my local machine. And the connectivity that we made in our earlier video on the plugin that we installed was just for this purpose. So this is why we actually made the connectivity. And now what happens is once you try to spin up any agent to be used within your Jenkins pipeline, it is going to communicate with the master and the master is going to communicate with the Docker which is running within my local machine, which is my host. And then it is going to spin up the container on my local machine and then it will communicate from there. So this is what is going to basically happen. And that's the connectivity that we made in our earlier video. So let's jump into our Jenkins once again and we'll start configuring from there because we are going to be creating a Jenkins file this time and we'll see how we can perform a build from there. All right. So now I'm back to my Jenkins over here and then I'm actually going to basically perform some more operation on this configured cloud operation that we saw because I also need to configure the Docker agent template over here. But as of now, let it be. I'll quickly show you what is there within my local machine at the moment. So if you can see, if I just do Docker images, you can see that I have many different images which is currently sitting within my local machine. And one of the image that I'm interested in this time is the Jenkins slave image that it, which is sitting within my local machine, this one. So this image is something you can obtain from the hubdoc.docker.com. It's very, very simple. All you're going to do is Docker pull off this particular image name. It's going to pull this particular image for you, the latest tagged version. So we are going to use this particular guy this time and we'll see how we can make use of it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to this particular Docker agent template and then I'm going to add a Docker agent template here and you will understand why I'm actually doing this. I'm actually going to call this as a uh, slave for now because this is the usual terminology that we have been using all these days. I'm just going to enable it and I'm going to call this as uh, Jenkins slave, something like that. And the Docker image that we need to be using. So the Docker image is nothing but the image which I was referring to, the Jenkins of the slave. So I'm just going to paste this guy over here. And then I'm going to set the initial capacity to 10 maybe. And the remote file system root is going to be the home slash Jenkins slash agent. So you may be wondering how I really got this particular home root system because if you go to this particular uh, Jenkins uh, slave docker image you can actually get that particular detail as well. So I guess it's if you go here to the hub.docker.com and if you scroll down all the way you can see that this is the uh, remote root uh, directory for this particular agent. So this is what I have actually used over here to just mention and show you the remote file system root. All right, so that's the one. And then I'm actually going to maybe save this. That's it. This is the only thing which I need to be doing. So don't worry about all these details. But this is one thing which is very, very important in order for using the images as a Docker slave or the Docker agent, yes. As you can see, this is the Docker image must have a Java installed and the entry point must be able to accept the Java slave connection parameters. See the Docker containers, uh, 
channel p slave and the source over here as an example so this is very very important so if you don't really have this let's say if you use some image which don't even have java in it or you don't really have the jnlp on that because this jnlp is the communication mechanism which the master uses to communicate with the agent or the slave which we already discussed in our earlier video you don't really have that then it's not going to work basically so you cannot just use any image as if whatever is available within your machine and try to communicate it it's not going to work so this is something that you need to be doing and i'm just going to hit save that's it super easy it is and now i'm actually going to start creating a pipeline and we'll see how it basically works so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to my uh, new item over here and i'm going to call this as jenkins slave or jenkins uh, agent for uh, as docker something like that it's a big name anyways and then i'm just gonna select the pipeline and i'm gonna hit ok so this time i'm just gonna use the pipeline project and now i need to select this pipeline script from the sem which is something about source control management and i'm gonna choose git but this time in our git you can see that we don't really have the way to actually communicate with the a container as an agent so if you go search for the Jenkins pipeline you can see that we don't really have any Jenkins file which actually talks about that so actually I need to add a file which can do it for me so I'm just gonna create a new file this time and I'm just gonna add a syntax which is going to be something we are gonna be using for talking with our slave that we have created so the slave so you can see that this is the pipeline and this is the agent which is uh, which has a label of slave and this is the stage like hello and the step over here uh, is to verify the java version and get the current working directory and i'm just going to create this time as uh, the directory as docker and jenkins file so i'm just going to create within uh, another directory this time because i need to separate the jenkins file that we already have over there so that's it. I'm just going to commit this directly to the master branch, not to the uh, develop branch we have already. And now if I go back to our Jenkins over here, uh, we need to, of course, copy or clone this particular project over here. Instead of the directly the Jenkins path over here, I just need to give the Docker because our Jenkins file is now sitting under the docker folder this is what we are referring to and i'm just going to hit save and now if i do a build let's see what's basically going to happen so if i do the build you can see that the build has started over here it is doing some sort of thing like that and if i go to the console output over here you can see that it is trying to fetch the source code from our uh, git repo and you can see that it is still waiting for the Jenkins uh, to find the label as slave. I guess it found one. You can see over there. While this is happening, I can directly go to the Jenkins over here. Uh, and you can see that it is actually executing it for us. And if I go to the manage Jenkins and if I go to the nodes, you can see that we have a slave over here which is the jenkins slave over here it's just shown as an error the reason being this particular slave doesn't really exist right now so what happened now some magic happened right so basically it now created an agent on the fly and then it executed the command that we told it to execute and then it just removed that particular container from us automatically so if I go to the uh, Jenkins agent as a Docker container over here, you can see that the build got succeeded. And if I go to the console output this time, you can see that it took the code from us, uh, from the GitHub repo, and then it executed the command that we have, like it showed us the Java version that we just asked in the shell script uh, over here. And then it got the uh, current working directory over here. So this is basically the working directory of the agent not the master basically so it is now executing everything within the slave container which is nothing but the jenkins slave container not on the master container which is pretty cool right so this is basically happening from my docker 
on Windows, which is currently running. So if you don't believe me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, the number of containers which is currently running within my machine. You can see that this is the master container that we have, and this is one of the exited containers. Don't even worry about it. And now I, I'm just going to perform one more build this time. Let me just build this guy. And let's open the Docker dashboard here. So once it executes, can you see that Jenkins slave has been executed over here? It's just shown over here, which means it is now fetching the image which is currently sitting within my Docker. So it is now getting that particular slave from here, basically. And you can see it is executing the command for me, which is pretty cool. And just give a second, once the test execution or once the build execution is fully done, you can see that this particular container will be gone as well. So the build guard succeeded and you just give it a minute. You can see that it's gone. So this is called as the ephemeral containers. Basically, the Docker containers are ephemeral and every time it executes, it is going to perform a job and then it's quit and delete that particular container for us automatically, which is pretty cool, right? So this is basically happening because this is all happening from our Docker for Windows which is currently running within my machine, which is pretty cool. So this is one of the most interesting way that you can actually communicate with the Docker, which is running within your local machine via Jenkins master using the configuration that we just made over there. And if you don't believe me, what I'm going to do is if I just go to this particular Jenkins and to the manage Jenkins this time, and if I go to the configure cloud over here, and let's say if I go to this particular Docker option, and if I just disable this particular enable to uh, disable, and now if I try to perform a build operation, you will see that this particular build is going to basically fail and it is going to tell that it couldn't able to really connect with the docker host or the docker sock docker.sock from this particular agent so you can see that the build is actually happening and if i go to the console output over here and you can also see my docker dashboard right now it's not even creating any jenkins slave this time so let's keep executing it and you can see that nothing is basically going to happen. So it's going to keep spinning up there and it is trying to talk with a slave agent, but it couldn't able to. That's the thing that it actually happened. So basically you should have this particular connectivity. If not, it's not going to work. Now, next video, we'll see how we can actually run a Docker file instead of the agent as the slave over here, as we can see, how we can leverage the power of Jenkins Docker over there. Thank you.